welcome to Huntsville Coffee Break. I'm your host, Megan Herring. Today we'll be taking a tour through Huntsville, looking at historical sites such as the Wynn Home and the Homestead. We'll also be talking about redistricting plans for Huntsville. All that coming up on Huntsville Coffee Break. show is the Wynn Home. Here to tell us more about this historical site is Megan Bridges. Made a Texas landmark in 2007, the Wynn Home is a 19th century style mansion where the members of the Wynn family actually lived in from 1883 up until it was donated to the city of Huntsville in 1997. Today the Wynn Home is known to many of the local citizens as an art gallery and a visitor center. Local artists can come to the Wynn Home and submit their art to be showcased for months at a time. The Wynn Home Art and Visitor Center is a place that shows Huntsville's heritage, history, and culture. I'm Megan Bridges here at the Wynn Home. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Megan. And here to tell us more about the Wynn Home is Linda Pease. Linda Pease, can you please um, elaborate about yourself? Well, thank you, Megan. I'm very happy to be here today, first of all, and I serve the city as the cultural services coordinator, and that includes um, operating the Wynn Home Art Center, and that's what we're going to talk about today, I understand. We have several other things that are part of the job, such as historical markers and um, taking care of some other cultural projects like the Cultural District. Can you um, tell me about the Art Center? Like, how can someone submit art to the Art Center? The Art Center does have an art gallery and we have um, regular rotating exhibits there and people can submit art that they would like to have shown there, either their own or art that they own of other people's or they can recommend someone um, totally outside their um, realm of um, living. So uh, we have forms and people can fill out forms. It includes a place for uh, people to give contact information, a little bit of information about the artist, and we have about three to four shows in the gallery a year. And um, we've had wonderful ones in there from metal shows by Charles Pebworth, abstract um, art of Stanley Lee, um, local artists, competitive uh, shows that include a variety of different media. We just had a, a quilt show, um, there are shows of Colonel um, Thomason's uh, artwork who sketched during the war and was a war hero and your Thomason room is named for him. Um, so all kinds of exhibits take place in the main gallery in the Wynn Home. In addition, there's a friends gallery. So that's a gallery where lots of art is shown at once. Uh, it changes out often. Uh, things are all for sale in that gallery. It is strictly for local artists, local and area artists. Uh, to show their work and so we've had a number of featured artists in there but we've shown um, some 100 um, artists works in, in that um, gift shop. Are there also classes that people can take at the Wynn Home? Absolutely, yes. One of the things when we studied what would people would like to have in such a, an art center, uh, classes was one of the things that was very important. So our charge was to go there and have uh, educational um, arts taught there. We have two classrooms and a pottery studio. So with those plus the great outdoors and um, we have an herb garden at the Wynn Home now thanks to the Texas Time Unit and Herb Society. And um, so there's lots of things to study there. Um, we have everything from painting and drawing, paper mache, Pilates, um, dance, ballroom dance, jazz dance, ballet, um, lots and lots of, of all kinds of arts, photography, and the list goes on and on. In fact, if someone has something that they'd like to, to take and calls up and, and asks, then it's very likely that we would do some research and see if we could add that to our list. Do you ever need volunteers at the Wynn Home? Oh, absolutely. In fact, the house practically runs with volunteers. Um, there is a volunteers organization called Friends of the Win, and they provide many volunteers, but one doesn't have to belong to that to, to volunteer there. But it's very important, and people can get in touch with us by calling 291-5424 or by 
um, getting to www.thewinhome.com. So we look forward to seeing people there. Thank you, Ms. Peace, for educating us a little bit about the Win Home. I've really enjoyed it. Coming up, we're going to take it to Hannah, who got to sit down with a very successful SHSU athlete. But first, let's take it to Megan, who's at a historic Huntsville restaurant. Thanks, Megan. I'm here at the Homestead on 19th, a very historical restaurant. It's actually the oldest occupied log cabin here in Huntsville, Texas. I hear there's a lot of interesting history, so follow me and uh, let's check it out. What was this? Was this always the homestead or was this building served for another purpose before? There's quite a history. These, these cabins, yes. which were all assembled here back in 1980, you had asked what was before. The, this property enjoyed its first incarnation was a restaurant and then it was basically idle for a number of years okay. until I came along in 95. Scooped it on up. Scooped it up. Um, but it's such a special property. The front cabin is the oldest occupied structure in all of Walker County. Built, oh, in, wow. built in 1834 by a 1834? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. By a German immigrant who raised 13 kids in the house. He and his brother fought in the Texas Revolution. I, I believe his uncle was at the signing at Goliad. Oh. So they were, they were a rich part of Texas history. Thank you again, Chef John, for sitting down with me. From Huntsville Coffee Break, I'm Megan Bridges here at the Homestead. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Megan. The Bearcat track and field team has had the privilege of having a student represent the U.S. team in international meets. Today we get to sit down and talk with senior decathlete Matt Johnson. Hi, Matt. How are you today? Good. Thank you for joining us. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do for the track and field team? Yeah, I'm a decathlete, and what that is, it's 10 different events, and it's based over two days, and it's five events per day, and you get 30 minutes break in between each event. On the first day, you have the 100-meter dash, long jump shot put, and the second day is 110 hurdles, discus throw, pole vault, javelin, and the 1500. What's your favorite part? Um, I probably like long jump and here recently I've gotten pretty fast so the 100 meter dash is fun. And what is the training like in these events? It's about equivalent to a full-time job. I practice from anywhere from 1 to about 5.30 after weights and that's basically every day of the week. And what do you do as far as campus? Is, is what you do for Sam Houston part of what you're doing internationally? Well, I have to, when I compete for Sam Houston, I compete at a collegiate level, and that can make me eligible to compete at a national level. So, can you tell me what it's like getting to travel and getting to do these meets? Right, well, um, with being a decathlete, there's usually not that many fans there, because we actually compete before the track meet starts, because we have to have the whole arena, and so, uh, competing on for the USA team at a national or international level you get to compete in front of thousands of fans and so it's just it's it's unlike any other thing that I've ever experienced whether it be football baseball or anything like that because the crowd gets into it and you use their momentum to help you just go to that next level what's it like competing with the USA team and getting to wear their jersey and country pride what what does it feel like well um, being a, a college student at Sam Houston, we only get like limited gear. And so like the first thing that stood out to me was they sent me this gift package in the mail and it was like a suitcase and jackets like these and windbreakers and a whole bunch of di just different gear. And then that's kind of like when it was just the real feeling hit to me that like, oh, I'm on the USA team. And then uh, when you get out on the track and people are like chanting USA or they're just like, go USA, they're just all supporting you just because you're wearing USA. It's just, it, it's awesome to have everybody behind you like that. That's amazing, it really is. So, but congratulations from us. I've really enjoyed sitting down and talking with you about what a decathlon is and what all you do. And um, hopefully one day I'll get to see you on national television um, competing for the U.S. Well, thank you all for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be right back after this quick break. Like slavery, poverty is not natural. It is man-made and can be overcome by the actions of human beings. In prayers like this, a good Lord gonna bless us, you know, here, you know, putting them on us, here we can bear them. I mean, it's not easy for anyone. All races, they're hurting real bad. For myself, I would just like to be able to have a, a house where my children could come to and feel safe and comfortable even when they come visit. So 
so. I mean, it's a lot more than, you know, that, you know the, the government can do for us, you know, where they're wasting their money and spending their time and money on. Poverty is real bad. People just don't know how it is until they have to live through part of it. Struggling from one meal to the next, I just struggle to make it. That maybe tomorrow will be a little better, but I'm not going to hold my breath. I just struggle to make it. You can help someone fight poverty. Hi, and welcome back to Huntsville Coffee Break. The city of Huntsville, just like any other city, went through a process in 2011. For the next 10 years, new wards have been set up within the city limits. Here to tell us about this process of redistricting is um, City Secretary Lee Woodward. Thanks for having me. Ms. Woodward, can you tell us about what redistricting is? Redistricting is basically a process whereby populations are reapportioned into wards or districts. Mm -hmm. um, this is basically the one person, one vote idea so that each eligible citizen has the same ability to affect elections in the electoral process. And how is this process related to citizens of Huntsville? Well, the citizens need to understand the process so they can know if it's being conducted fairly or so that they could weigh in on potential maps for the new districts, that type of thing. As with anything, the more you know about it and the more involved you are, then the more certain you are of the outcome. Okay, and when will this map um, take effect? Well, the map that was approved by the council this year will take effect next year. It will not affect the November 2011 election. The county is in the process of using this map to create their own map with new precincts. And of course, you'll see this on the state and federal level as well as we've seen throughout this year. Well, this map, uh, as I said, has been approved by the council. It's going to the Department of Justice for them to approve or not. It's a process called preclearance. And the map is based on population in the wards and trying to formulate new ward lines. We want to have as small a variation as possible between the size of the wards. And here in Huntsville, we have a somewhat unique situation because we also have prison populations of prisoners who don't vote. And that's something that has to be taken into account as well. Is there any way this map would not get approved? I think it would be very unlikely for Department of Justice not to approve the map. Uh, that's always a potential, uh, you know, every time that you redistrict, because what they're looking at is the voting strength of particular groups, and they don't want that voting strength lessened uh, on anyone, pretty much anyone's behalf, uh, which is a fair sort of description of redistricting in itself, uh, that it keeps every group and every individual's voting strength relatively equal. Okay, and how is this map different from last year's? Well, our current map has Ward 2 coming down here and around the top of Elkins Lake, and it also has the Avenues area split on 19th Street. So you'll see that's changed in this map that's upcoming for next year. Ward 2 has pulled back and moved into the city. The Avenues are all included in Ward 1. Ward 3 remains basically the same. It got a little more area. And then in this area, Spring Lake is now combined with Elkins Lake. They have uh, some similar water infrastructure and some of the roads coming out to them are used by both groups. And so some council members felt that it would be fair to include that all in one ward. Was there any conflict when trying to create this map? Well, there was a lot of input this year, which was great. Now, obviously we don't do redistricting that often. I wasn't here with the last time we did redistricting, um, but we did have a fair number of citizens who called, emailed, um, came to council meetings and spoke to their council members, and that actually was a really great part of the process. Council members were also able to discuss this at several meetings. We had public hearings, and that helped them to really narrow down how they wanted to make changes. This map is quite different from the very first map that we proposed in this process. Uh, and so it's come a long way. Thank you again. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Join us next time on Huntsville Coffee Break. See you next time. <laughs>